those of you who got an invite, welcome to Nerd Prime. <laughs> no matter where in the world you are, we're all Nerds International. With the hyphen. All right, YouTube, it's Mr. Mean coming at you from Beaumont, Texas. I am in a remote setup just because my son is sleeping right down here, right down there. You can't see him. He's out of the frame, um, but I could see him, and that's what's important. Uh, I'm going to take these off. Of course, I can't see now, but uh, I got my HD camera going. It's uh, it's working great. I'm using my headset just because <clears throat> I don't want to use the, the mic built into the laptop. It's a good mic, but this sounds better. But today's video du jour... I finally got a hard copy. Uh, we made a trip yesterday to Houston, to Humble, which is a little suburb of Houston, uh, to go to Costco because we wanted to get some some bulk things from Costco. You know, the toilet paper, the paper towels, all the baby diapers, all that fun stuff. And um, we're not fans of Walmart in any way, shape, or form. We don't even like Sam's Club. Just don't want to be there. Don't want to go there. So we're not... <laughs> So we paid for the membership for Costco. They opened up one in Humble last year. It's only an hour and a half away, so it was worth it. Um, we made the drive. We had a nice uh, we had a nice lunch out there, and then um, on, on the way back we stopped off at Etten Games because, uh, well, I'm part of the tribe, man. I gotta support the tribe, and Etten always has something unique and different. Um, and so I wanted to, I wanted to go, you know, spend a couple bucks there if I could, I didn't have much to spend. I hate putting stuff on credit cards, but, um, finances are really tight. Mama's getting off a, a six weeks of no work and I was out for a week sick with no pay. So I thought work was going to be cool and let me slide, but they didn't. And, uh, they charged me a week of sick leave, which I didn't have. I only had nine hours, so kind of sucky, so I'm only going to get half a paycheck. And then, of course, my lovely ex-wife takes half of my paycheck, so I'm really going to get no paycheck next uh, next Friday. But that's okay, man. We, we survive, and we do what we got to do, and that's why we have credit cards. And if you use them responsibly, they're there when you need them. And so we try to use ours responsibly. Um, we've been surviving on credit cards, unfortunately, for the last couple of weeks just because our savings is gone but that's okay that's not what this video is about you don't care about my finances i don't even care about my finances i care about that little boy down there because he's awesome and uh <laughs> he's wearing a cool t-shirt i wish i could show it to you but it's just a pain in the ass to turn this camera around but it basically says dude your girlfriend keeps checking me out <laughs> you guess you picked that up so anyway so enough of the ramblings uh went to etton found a cool game i was looking for it i own it in pdf i backed the kickstarter as a pdf and and got got everything and i kind of wish i would have gotten the hardback book um but unfortunately at the time i didn't have the money <laughs> so you got to do what you got to do but that's why you know kickstarters are great because if they work they'll eventually come out in print and you'll see them in your favorite local game store and today's video du jour fragged empire still shrink wrapped um <clears throat> this was the only copy i guess that they had um so we are we are breaking it right now. Look at that. I'm tearing it off. It's so it's an hey, it's a two for video. It's a it's a video review and an unboxing. Woot! So of course I keep making all this noise. I'm gonna wake my kid up and then we're not gonna be able to do a video. So again, apologize for the shaky quality here. I'm on my laptop in my recliner downstairs. I have a video set up in the spare bedroom upstairs or my son's bedroom. <laughs> it's no longer mine. It was my hobby room and uh, I lost that. But um Here's Frag, Fragged Empire. Um, this is the core rule book. Um, this thing is a beast. It is hardback, um, created by Wade Dyer. I believe he's an a, he's an Aussie. Um, I've seen his videos. You know, I've watched his videos on YouTube, and I like them. Um, I wish he'd put out some more. He just started, um, well, about I guess a year or two two years ago, I can't remember now. He had videos where he just had like a camera set up and he was sitting at a table with the book open. He's gotten a little higher production quality now, and um, he has some cool graphics and stuff. They're only like six, seven minute videos, uh, so do yourself a favor, go check them out. I'll try to remember to put a link uh, to those videos, uh, or at least to the the character creation video um, in this uh, video here when I get everything all said and done. Um, this is probably going to be another 20, 30-minute video just because um, 
I really dig this game. Um, I've got the PDF, like I said, and it's gorgeous. They also did an optimized PDF for like your, your tablets and, and your uh, smartphones. So um, really, really nice of them to do that. I know it's just a matter of editing and it's not terribly difficult, but it's still nice when companies take that moment to realize that not everybody can afford a $60 game book. Um, and, you know, people, a lot of people play with PDFs now at the game table just because it's easier to, you know, when you're going to other people's houses. I do it as well. If I can find a book in PDF, I will purchase it in PDF. And then, but I also collect, as you guys know, um, and so I try to always get a hardback whenever I can or a, a physical copy if it's a softback cover. So anyway, let's get into this. This is Fragged Empire. Um, it's a dystopian future. I mean, like way in the future, humans don't exist anymore. They're, they're not, they're not an option. Um, basically we fucked everything up. We created AIs and robots and, and genetically engineered creatures to go fight our wars and we wind up dying out. I don't, and I believe they do go in here. I haven't read the full background. Um, I've been reading up on game mechanics and stuff because, I really am dying for a, a hardcore sci-fi game. And unfortunately, Star Wars, while it is sci-fi, it's not hardcore. Um, and I do enjoy my sci-fi game, but I like running odd games on Saturdays at Bookstand um, just to give people a taste of different games that are out there. So shameless plug for book... Oh. Sorry, my headset turns off after a couple seconds uh, for the first time. I don't know why it does that, but... Anyway, um, you guys probably didn't hear it, so it's no big deal. Um, <clears throat> but shameless plug for Bookstan. I run uh, every, usually every other Saturday, or maybe sometimes even every Saturday, I will run a one-shot of a game that interests me. Um, I've done uh, Dungeon Crawl Classic a couple of times up there, and that's always a big hit because it's old-school D&D, but it's a modern game. Um, and it's got really good rules and, and, and people seem to really enjoy it. So, and I like running games for DCC for Goodman games cause they, they really take care of their GMs and plus the game is just downright fun. I would do it even if they wouldn't give me free stuff because the game is that fun. Um, I've run, of course, Star Wars. That's how I got my local group together right now and, uh, enjoying the crap out of that. We haven't played in a month cause I've been sick cause we play every two weeks, um, but uh, this coming Wednesday is our next session, so we're excited about that. But I've run, um, oh God, I've run all kinds of games over there. So this is this is one that I wanted to run. Um, the next game I am going to run, though, is The Dark Eye. So if you're in the Beaumont or, or Houston area and you want to come down and give it a try, and you guys have heard me raving about it, hopefully next Saturday, and I'll, I'll put a note up um, on uh, Facebook and everything, and maybe YouTube. Uh, to promote that I'll be running the Dark Eye and I'll have pre-gen characters and everything. So we'll be able to hopefully try the Dark Eye next next Saturday. Um, this Saturday, like I said, was no game because I'm still getting over being sick. I still got a vicious cough and plus we needed to go to Humble and uh, to Costco. But anyway, let's get into this. Wayne Dyer. Um, one of the things I, I'd like to say, in my opinion, it was a successful Kickstarter because he really, I mean, every week he was on there saying where they were at. And he's a small press company. I think it's him and maybe one other guy who, who's probably not even a, a, an employee, just a guy that was helping him out. And then his wife, of course, was helping him. So um, really hard work. Um, shows you what a successful Kickstarter can do. Um, don't make promises you can't keep. You know, don't get greedy over the money. They had a successful Kickstarter. They came through. I mean, I got my stuff, uh, my PDFs, lickety split. Of course, their PDFs are easy to get, so it wasn't a, it wasn't a hard deal. But uh, I know the books have been going out, and people have been getting their books, I believe, because obviously I bought this in the game store, so I have to assume that the Kickstarter people got all their books. And I hadn't heard anything negative. I did go check the forums on Kickstarter, and I didn't see anything really super negative people bitching about anything I, and I to be honest I just glanced over it I didn't dive knee deep into it um, I'm kind of burnt out on forums lately after the whole thing that happened with Palladium Games and Robotech and I talked about that uh, in my uh, Savage Rifts video so I don't want to get into it here but um, one of the cool things the first thing you'll notice is the cover is gorgeous I'm sorry there's a glare but again I'm recording this in the living room and the lighting is not perfect um, it's a great cover. This book is a beast. It's hardback. It's like short of just short of 400 pages, I believe. 
Yeah, 383 pages, of course. That's acknowledgement and an, a very comprehensive index. And then, of course, a couple of charts and everything for the GM and for players. And then, of course, the character sheets, uh, spacecraft list, all bunch of kinds of charts and everything. Um, they really, really, the layout of this book is top notch. I cannot, for a small press company, I think, I'm pretty sure this is his first endeavor into the RPG world. And I would say it is an astounding success. Um, if you're looking for quality layout um, and graphics, this is it. There's not a ton of art in this book because there is just so much information they've got to go through um, because this is a whole setting. You don't need anything else but this book. Um, but the art that is in here is top notch. It's, it's very well done. I don't know who the artists are. I haven't looked because, like I said, I just didn't read it on the PDFs. And you saw me just open this right now. So... Obviously, I'm 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 uh, I'm going through this with you, but uh, whoever the artists are that he got, I will say kudos to them because they did a fantastic job. He has a really a really cool dedication in here. I assume Shell is his wife. He says your kindness and just generosity are a constant reminder to me of God's grace and love, and I think that is absolutely beautiful. Um, and then to Frank, Jordy, Jay, Mark, and Simon, thank you for your ceaseless friendship without you this book would not exist so very heartfelt i feel and uh basically telling you that he had some great people that helped him out so yeah he kind of is a one-man show um it was copyright 2015 by design ministries that's the name of wade's company you can go to fraggedempire.com that's a www fragged f-r-a-g-g-e-d e-m-p-i-r-e.com and you can see they've got a plethora of stuff up there on the website um, to help you, uh, you know, get into this if you're into it. Um, the one thing I want to go into, I can't really show you because I don't have the setup to do it. But you see, here's the, here's the uh, table of contents. And you can see the little um, um, bars, um, like circles or whatever. And then they have the page numbers. In the PDF enhanced copy, you can click on those and it'll take you to that chapter, which to me... That is awesome. That is that is what you need to have in a book that is this size because you're going to be flopping around here trying to, to make a character and do things. And, you know, there's going to be a lot of page turning. So I, I recommend getting some tabs if you're going to make characters and, and just go for it. What I wish they do, and they may already have it, I don't know, but Wade, if you, if you check this video out, and I'll definitely post it on the uh, G Plus site and everything, and I'll, I'll make sure that you can get a link to it. Um, I'd really like to just see either a PDF copy or even a print copy. I know that's not always easy to do, but I'd like to see some sort of um, quick reference just for how to create a character. In other words, just a PDF that you could download that just has the character creation section in it. Um, make it for sale, 10 bucks. I think that's a fair price, five bucks if you're, if you're feeling cool. Um, but with a book this size, it's very intimidating. I've been doing this for 30 years. I've been running games, help designing games, playing games for 30 years and I can tell you right now you want to get this into as many people's hands as you can you've got it up on drive through RPG and uh, RPG now which is phenomenal um, but make that character creation um, pamphlet and and give it or give it away for free if, if you I, I recommend you sell it for five bucks um, most enterprising GMs like myself would would buy one or two copies or bu or buy a high ha hard copy or a PDF copy and then print it out a couple of times for their players just to help. Because this is a $60 book, man, $60, $70 book. It's not cheap. Uh, you know, everybody can't afford to go out and buy this. So making it relatively accessible to people in a manner that they can get it, you know, and, and have access to it um, would be a great thing and really would help your game go far. Um, I think, if I remember correctly, he's got pre-gens on the website uh, he's got a, a free adventure up on the website, which is actually really good. Um, I got a couple of the adventures as, as part of the Kickstarter. Um, I can't wait to run this. I, I really can't. Now, um, I've already went through the layout and, and said oodles and oodles. Uh, the art, and the, it's very black and white. It's one of the things you'll notice. Um, and I like it. it. It sets a, like I said, that's one of my pet peeves is to have consistent art throughout your book. Have a theme. Everything's color-coded. Um... I'm trying to find like a really good 
It's just the art that's in here is fantastic. Oh, there's a good one. There's a critter. Look at that. No, so that's amazing. That's just cool art. So one of the things I wanted to go through and I wanted to say, oh, my son's waking up, so you might hear him scream. Um, this is a D6 system. In general, I am not a D6 fan of our of our D6 RPGs. I don't like the, the curve of uh, probabilities that you get with a D6, especially when you have all these polyhedral dice out there, and I have a plethora of these dice. I want to use them. This game only uses D6s. Um, that being said, and me saying that I'm not a fan of D6 systems, I like this system. It's a 3D6 system. You're trying to hit a target number. Rolling high is good. Rolling low is bad. Modifiers are real simple. Plus one, minus one, plus two, minus two. That's about it. I mean, it might go a little higher, but not much. Um, when you create your character, uh, you, 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 you get all these you know, you choose your race and, and there's, I'm not going to go into the races and stuff. I don't want it to be that type of review. Um, cause I haven't read the book all the way through, but I, what I will say is the races are unique. Um, the monsters in here are unique. Um, it's just, it's such a far cry from anything that's been on the market in quite a while that, uh, it's very well done and it's very unique. You have the big bruisers, you have the, the slimy entry guys, the corporate guys. Uh, you have this like almost like a felonoid race. They have a uh, double set of ears. They're fantastic. The, uh, the Nephilim, uh, which are closest to the human. The Legion are your big burly warrior types. Um, the Kaltoran, um, which are the like cat-like people. Um, let me see if I can get the image over there. Hopefully you can see that. I apologize. It's, like I said, this is a mobile setup. Um, what's cool about them is, if I remember correctly, they live like their ancestors. They have their memories. And there was a period in their time where it was very dark and they were, they were like living in caves because the planet they were on was toxic on the surface. And so they went underground and they were cannibalistic. They ate each other and they remember this stuff. They have the ability to draw on these past lives, so to speak. So phenomenal. The Legion guys are just big tanks. They're usually assumed to be stupid. They're not. They're very tactically inclined. They're very martial inclined. And of course, they're big and strong, but people just assume they're stupid. And so they, a lot of the times, they use that as a, as a strength in dealing with the other races. Uh, the corporates are basically, they're the closest thing to humans you get. Um, and they're basically all about leadership and, and dealing with money and everything. And so what happened is there's this huge galactic war that went on for years these races were genetically bred by the ancestors to fight the war for them, and then everybody just disappeared. And there was this big, huge alien that came in and was fighting them, and then he just disappeared. And so now everybody's there's no reason to fight the war. They don't even know what they're fighting for. So they've had about a hundred years of peace, and now everybody's starting to take to the stars again. So this, they found the spaceships and everything. They found. They're getting their bearings as a civilization, all of the different races. And so they're trying to find their way because they have no guidance. And that's what's kind of neat about the game. So you start out, hopefully you'll get enough of players that you'll have one of every species and you'll get a ship. You get resource points in the game. Um, and then you go out and you make your way in the universe. And some of the adventures that are written, there's still some antagonists out there that are left over from the, the big, bad, crazy machine God guy. Oh, hold on. My baby's crying. I got to give him his binky. Bear with me one second. I apologize. Hey, buddy. What's up, little man? There you go. He just woke up from a nap. Oh, good boy. All right. Sorry about that, guys. We won't be able to go too much longer because now he's awake. He's going to get hungry. So um, so you still have, uh, the. I think it's um, the machinist or mechanics um, mechanics, something like that. They're basically like the mechanoids from Robotech and all that. They're robots that were designed and they're, they've become almost self-sufficient and they just want to go out and destroy everything. And so they're still one of the bad guys. And there's just, it's just open because you're coming out of this dark age, basically where all you knew was war. And then all of a sudden all your commanders and your generals and your leadership just disappeared poof, they're gone. 
And so now you're trying to figure out what do you do? You know, there's no supply chain. There's no chain of command. Everybody's trying, you know, the Legion wants to just go out and kill stuff, but they don't have a, you know, they're a loaded gun with nowhere to shoot. And the corporate guys are trying to make deals and there's no one to deal with. And, you know, the Kaltorians are trying to survive their, you know, 100 years underground eating each other and dealing with all the drama that happened with that. So you've got some really cool flawed characters that are taking their baby steps out into the universe. And it's really cool because there's exploration. The game really l lends itself to playing whatever you want to play. You want to play a combat game, you can go after these robots and, you know, you can kick ass and take names. You want to play, uh, you know, uh, intrigue and travel and everything. You, you get your corporate on his ship with a couple troopers with your couple of guys and you go around looking for shit to do. So it's just the world, it's your oyster. You can really do whatever you want because it's wide open because everything is new, you know technology a lot of this technology a lot of the guys don't even know what it does because no one told them you know and stuff's been laying dormant for like a hundred years so they're they're trying to figure stuff out so it, it's really cool um it, it it lends itself the other neat thing that the game has is how they do experience and um downtime they have a downtime mechanic and you get you get so many points and dice and then you can invest those and you can improve on skills and attributes and stuff. So it's really cool that even when you're not playing the game, it's assumed that you're doing something. Um, and, and that is in the mechanoid. I'm sorry. I opened up to the right page with the, the bestiary and it's, it's got the mechanoids in here. So, um, and I'll show you one of them. That's one of the mechanoids right there. Um, that's like a combat chassis and then they have these little guys that are like hopefully you can see that they're uh, little pods that fly around and these guys are just bad news they're just bad guys all the way around um, here's a harbinger of destruction um, that's a huge ship that has all these mechanoids on it uh, old dead eye I mean so and there's old dead eye hopefully you can see it so um, it, it takes a little bit of investment to make a character. It's not terribly hard. And as a matter of fact, Wade has a, um, a really cool video up on his website about how to make a character. And it's only like a seven-minute video. So kind of tells you what you need to do and how to do it. Um, just, just the basics. They don't go real deep in it. The other cool thing, um, you figure, well, you know, you got these four races. Uh, they're all going to be the same, right? No. We have we have talents. Um and then with those talents, you can use, you know, so you can have two um, Kaltorians that are both, you know, thieves, but one could be like the Han Solo type thief, and the other one could be like a cat burglar type thief. So you can have a huge amount of variation between your characters, and it's just really cool that um, the game is very well done. And like I said, really, this is all you need. They do have on their website, um, they have a download uh for like errata and everything in the book because unfortunately as always in these books there's always some typos or some spelling errors that or, or rules errors that that creep up in there and so you can download that the nice part is with all of their supplements <clears throat> pardon me i still got that frog in my throat all their supplements and all their pdf uh books and, and pamphlets that they've done they all maintain the exact same theme throughout them of the you know white paper black like technical font with little black markers and stuff and the pips for the dice it's it's maintained throughout everything which is really nice because it really just kind of gives you a flow of the game and i really like that i like it when games when when game designers make an effort to keep everything the same so that when you pick up one of these adventures or a supplement you know it's for fragged empire there's no mistaking oh what game is this you know right off the bat. As soon as you flip it open and you see everything, it all makes sense. So um, the nice thing on the book, what they did is, um, I'll put it up there. You can pause it for a second. Um, they've got all these little iconography. So it's the setting is post-post-apocalyptic, genetic engineering, cultural tension, and exploration. So there you go. Because, um, again, all the leaders and all the uh, management of the galaxy – because it's a galaxy, we you you have spaceships, you can fly around, you can go to different planets. They're all gone. So uh, you got four playable races. You got the Corporation, the Kaltorians, the Legion, and the Nephilim. 
the rules. Uh, Non-setting specific, because it is kind of generic. It's a 3D6 resolution. Tactical miniatures combat. They do have rules in here for, for uh, if you want to use uh, three, you know, use miniatures. Customizable equipment. That is the other cool thing. You can get gear, and in your downtime, one of the character examples they give is a Kaltorian tech. And she's like the mechanic for the ship and everything, but she also futzes with all the weapons and everything. So you can use your downtime to improve your weapons, improve your armor, and improve your gadgets. They have rules for that in here, and they're not terribly complicated. Um, Nonlinear progression, best for long sandbox games. Buy, sell, trade goods. That's the other thing you can do is because the galaxy is basically reset back to zero you got planet a over here that needs food and you got planet b over here that grows an abundance of food but doesn't have any weapons but planet a makes weapons you as a player um and the corporates really excel at this by the way um you can you can broker a deal and you can transfer you know food and and weapons back and forth you get paid they get food they get weapons it works out really well so um research that also falls into your downtime um, you can do research and you can find new things. And then, of course, you've got spacecraft. So um, it, it, that's the cool thing about it. Oh, my little man is... I'm going to have to get him a bottle here soon. That binky is not going to hold him tight. So anyway, that's that's my, my thought and my review on Fragged Empire by Wayne Dyer. Um, it's, it's a phenomenal game. If you get a chance, pick it up. Um, I was fortunate enough to find it at um, Etten Games in Humble. And I'm very happy. Um, it's a very, very well laid out, very well produced game. Um, I think they've got a second Kickstarter going right now, or it's about to go, where they're introducing four new races. Um, for this, so they're expanding on the, this universe of the Fragged Empire. Um, and the races are cool. I don't want to spoil it. Go watch them. Uh, go watch the Kickstarter video. Back it if you can. Let me know what you think. Um, Wade and his his friends have done a phenomenal job for a small press company. This is this is a high quality product. This is what um, you know. If I'm going to pay sixty dollars for a game book, it better be top notch. And this is definitely top notch. Um, again, it's a 3D6 system. You want to you want to roll equal to or higher than whatever the task number is that the GM has set. You have basic modifiers plus one, minus one, plus two, minus two. Um, I think it goes as high as plus four. I'm not sure. I didn't see anything. All I saw was plus one and two modifiers, but that's enough when you're rolling on a 3D6 bell curve. That can be the huge difference between success and failure. Um, there are some, some talents and, and things that you can get that will set your character apart from everybody else, which is super cool. There are some mechanics where you can um, manipulate your dice rolls. Um, you can even re-roll a die. Um, I, I was just briefly gl- glancing through the mechanics. I am definitely going to prep this to run it one day at Bookstand as an as a open RPG thing. Um, and I definitely am looking forward to giving it a, a, a try because I think it's going to be a phenomenal game. And I hope it has a long and fantastic future. And if you guys get a chance to, to back the Kickstarter or to pick up a copy of the rule book from your local game store, please do. Um, it's a little cost prohibitive to buy it straight because it's coming out of Australia. So the, the importation taxes, custom fees are going to kill you. So get your local game store to order it. It's going to cost you 60 to 70 bucks. I'm telling you it's worth it. I give this a uh, Mr. Mean seal of approval. It's a fantastic game. I Once I run it, I'll do a review of, of how it ran and go into a little bit of the story because I'll probably run my own story. I don't typically like to run stories out of books. Um, but it definitely looks phenomenal. The art is top notch. The layout of the book is top notch. Uh, the quality of the of the book itself, that book is not going to fall apart anytime soon on you. It's very well put together. Um, they used a printer in China. <clears throat> I would wish they would print in America, but it's cost prohibitive sometimes, and I know that. Um, but that's okay. Uh, the book is gorgeous. So again, Mr. Mean Seal of Approval. I highly recommend you pick this one up. Um, if you like, you know, that sci-fi setting, you like that amongst the stars and make your own way this is the game for you if you like it where you can modify your weapons and you can modify your tech this is the game for you if you want to play an an alien that's not human 
this is definitely the game for you. You got four choices, and pretty soon when their other Kickstarter is successful, you'll have four more choices. So you'll have eight different playable races. That's that's awesome. So anyway, as always, um, peace and hair grease. Be nice to each other, and uh, play more games. Be nice.